remember being so rocked. And the, the little the passage that I read about her wasn't that long. Mm-hmm. And I just sat there like, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Um, her husband, being foolish, mm-hmm. his name was Nabal, mm-hmm. I think, yeah, being foolish, she goes and David's, you know, on his way to come and kill him and she stops him. And she sort of changes his heart about killing her foolish husband who has made some dumb, unwise choices and decisions that will result in him being killed by the king. And I remember David saying something along the lines of, um, woman, your words have changed the king's heart. And that just rocked me. Like, your words have changed the heart of a king, have totally transformed the way somebody like in higher up authority is going to now conduct themselves Mm -hmm. and I'm like that's the power of a woman's words and so in that the Lord just showed me as a woman the power that I have in my words Mm -hmm. and I had to look and I saw that I wasn't always using that power Mm -hmm. for good Mm -hmm. Um, and it may not necessarily be something that seemed negative that I would say but the way I'd say something um, that just didn't uplift but more or less tore down Mm -hmm. um and so I have a friend who, a male friend of mine, who always says to me, um, you always want to be in control. And I'm like, I don't always want to be in control. That's all I've seen mm-hmm. is women that had to be in control. Mm-hmm. So if all I've seen is women that had to be in control, then my first response and instinctual response is to step up and be in control. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that even happens with me stepping up and telling people how to do things mm-hmm. um, and just realizing like the power of my words. That, that really rocked me when I think about Abigail.